putting you guys on your glass for the boat tour today. Now, before we get too far into the journey, we just need to have one of those quick safety chats, just in case we're going to hit some of those tropical icebergs. Now, if you all do look underneath your seats, you will find that there's no life jackets. Uh, now, this is because we are unsinkable, just like Titanic. Great thought. No, uh, there is two life rings on this vessel, one at the front, one at the back. This one's Front. However, I will be selling mine for $200 and anybody that would like to buy it, go ahead. Um, if you do happen to pull over, folks, don't worry too much. You get a free tube ride back to Big Cat, which is pretty sick. And if you do feel the emotion of the ocean today, folks, who is seasickness bags placed around the vessel, uh, if you don't make it to one of them in time, don't worry too much. You can just go over the side, it makes for great fish food. But besides that, with the guys with your hats on, you may have noticed it did get a little bit more windier once we did leave the big cat. So just keep an eye on them. Uh, they do happen to fall overboard. I will try my best to retrieve them. It's just going to cost you the beer from the bar. So keep that one in mind. Other than that, there's not much to do now besides so sit back and relax and enjoy the last bit of boat tour. You may have noticed it's a little bit choppy out here, so you might feel a few waves coming through from time to time. Don't worry too much, I haven't capsized it yet. Australia and the Papua New Guinea. And it is around about the same size as that Japanese island chain, or 70 million football fields. So if you think of it in terms like that, it's pretty large. And the reef you're looking at today, folks, is what we call a patch reef. And that's simply because it grows in patches. Now you have two main types of corals down there, folks. You have your soft coral and your hard coral. With the hard coral making up the overall structure. Now with the namings of these corals, folks, your marine biologists were a very, very creative bunch of people. And virtually what it looks like is generally its name. And this is also because the scientific names are very hard to pronounce. And I'd get confused, you'd get confused, or be confused. So saving all this confusion, if you do see coral down there, it looks a little bit like a boulder. Boulder coral. You see a coral down there that looks a little bit like a brain. Brain coral. You see a coral down there that looks a little bit like a plate. Plate coral. Pop quiz, what do you call a coral that looks a little bit like a table? Oh, congratulations, there's some intelligent people on this glass bottom boat. That is right, it's table coral. Now for your soft coral down there, you may have seen some beige looking corals swaying in the currents. Now that is your spaghetti coral. It is a little bit misleading though, you can't actually eat spaghetti coral. Uh, in fact, if you were to eat spaghetti coral, it'll be a little bit like eating jello with toothpicks in it. So, folks, if you are snorkeling and diving today, uh, please do not eat our spaghetti coral. Now, folks, as you may or may not know, coral is actually made up of two components in which have a symbiotic relationship, which simply means they need each other to survive. So, you have your coral polyp, and your algae called Zalanthalae. Now folks, your coral polyp is actually closely related to your jellyfish. So you imagine a jellyfish and you stick it upside down with those tentacles up in the air. That's a coral polyp. And they range from the size of a pinhead all the way up to your fingernail. And they're actually no opaque or see-through colour. So in order for coral to get the colours you see today needs to have that symbiotic relationship with the algae. Now folks, 
just like a plant that algae uses photosynthesis from the sun to get its energy, therefore providing a food source for your coral polyp, and your coral polyp provides a home for the algae. And that's how it all interlocks. Now, folks, do we have anybody afraid of sharks today? Anybody? Put your hands up nice and high. We don't judge on the glass, but I'm both afraid of sharks. Sharks. Don't eat you, man eaters. All right, we've got a few. For those who are afraid of sharks, aren't you embarrassed to say so? Don't worry, you don't need to be afraid of sharks. They are big, bad, great white. When this guy attacks you, he's going to attack you from behind. Which means it's going to be a bit too late for you to notice, and therefore you don't need to be scared of him. Another good thing about these great whites is we do not find them this far up north, but they do prefer those colder waters. In saying that, we do get two main types of sharks here. We get your black tip and your white tip reef shark. Now these guys are fairly timid. Uh, you normally see them swimming away from you while they're coming towards you to attack. You may also have seen some uh, broken down coral or coral rubble today. Actually it's a natural cycle. It is breaking down and therefore allowing a new limestone surface for your new coral to rejuvenate on. In fact, you have some marine animals in which aid this breakdown. You have your crown of thorn starfish, or cos for short, which normally get a pretty bad rap as the coral killers of the ocean. However, they do eat the faster growing coral, allowing these slower bulb corals a chance to grow. Now, your other marine animal in which aid this breakdown is your parrot fish. Now your parrotfish are your brightly multicolored fish down there, blues, greens, purples, anything along those lines, with their front of their mouth looking a little bit like a beak. Now these guys actually feed on the dead and don't crawl and scraping off the algae. And they do live in quite an interesting way. They live in schools of fish of around four to five, two one dominant male, two the rest being female. Now something is to happen to this dominant male. The next largest female line will actually change her gender within two weeks and she'll overtake his role. Another interesting fact about these fish is just before it is time to go to bed, they encase themselves in a snot mucus membrane in which they use to defend up any predators throughout the night. Now folks, as we all do in the morning, we get a little bit hungry. Most of us in Australia are doing wheat mix However, these guys actually eat that snot mucus membrane for breakfast. Ah, oh, gonna love it. You also may have noticed some sluggish looking animals on the sea floor, coming in a variety of different shapes, sizes and colours. And they are what we call our sea cucumbers or sea slugs. Now these guys feed by sticking their stomachs out of their mouths and filtering the sand for any goodies they may find. So it's sort of like a filter system for your fish tank. However, it's the Great Barrier Reef. And out the other end comes nice clean sand for us. So do keep that in mind, folks, when you are snorkeling, I meant, sorry, walking and tanning along the beautiful beaches of Green Island today, you're most probably laying in some sea cucumber poop. Great thought. Alright, so we are going to another part of the reef where you do cross your fingers, cross your toes. Hopefully we'll see some larger fish. Sorry buddy, you're going to have to talk real loud. Yeah, unfortunately because of the bad weather we have, it has stored up the water and it's gotten rid of some of the colour. Unfortunately it's not what I can do about that one.
fishing on the Great Barrier Reef in a green zone. So you can get fined up to $25,000 per incident. So this means per fish you catch, per person, per fishing rod, per boat, and that can add up to quite a hefty fine. And it's a lot cheaper to go to a fancy restaurant and get some good fish there. Now, does anybody have any questions? I'm not a marine biologist, but I am pretty good at making up some interesting answers. So if you do have any questions, please let me know. No questions. You guys are an easy group. All right, what's up, mate? Kind of coral. Is it just the coral that light or just coral itself? Okay, it's got a couple of things to do with the color of the coral. So like I said, bad weather started up made the water not clear. Also, a thing called light refraction. So the deeper you go in water, you start to lose color. The first color you lose is red. You lose that at about half a meter. And also, <laughs> photographers, when they go down, they bring their own light source and they normally go at night. So when they bring their own light source down, they're actually making the color brighter. And yeah. <laughs> So yeah, a couple of things, and also coral is half an animal, half a plant, so it does need sunlight to be more vibrant, a bit of an overcast day. Any other questions? I'm full of useless information, guys. Alrighty, so you may have seen some green fish down there with yellow side fins and a blue stripe on the top of their body. These are called surgeon fish. This is simply because if you look closely to the back of its body where it joins its tail, you'll find it has a little hole. And out of that hole comes a spike in which it uses as a defense mechanism. And it is meant to be as sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, hence the name of surgeon fish. So don't mess with those fish. Sorry, mate. You have to speak really loudly. <laughs> sharks? Yeah, you do find sharks around here. Um, they're just really scared of humans and boat activity, so they normally scatter before we get here. When? When? Sorry? When? Where? Where? Anywhere, anywhere in the ocean you can find sharks. Another quick thing. Everybody has everybody seen the movie Finding Nemo? Yeah. Yes, okay. Does everybody remember in the start of the movie Nemo's mother is tragically killed by a barracuda? Yep. Yeah. Sort of, kind of? Alright. If this movie was to be factually correct, Nemo's father actually should have turned into Nemo's mother, therefore taking his role. Disney didn't think that was too good, a bit hard for mum and dad to explain, so you can definitely see why they kept it as Nemo's father and not Nemo's mother. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> 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 
Alrighty, so is anybody on the semi sub next? Anybody on the semi submersible? Yep. See that yellow thing right next to us? Yep. That's the semi sub. We all live in a yellow submarine. So as soon as you get off this one, you don't have time to go to the toilet, you don't have time to go get some food, just go straight onto that one. So we'll leave without you folks, it's not going to wait around for too long. So just keep that in mind. Alrighty, so on that note, unfortunately, it's around about that time when we do have to head back to Big Cat. So on behalf of the Big Cat crew, I'd like to say thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoyed your glass bottom boat tour. I also hope you guys enjoy the rest of your time out here at beautiful. Uh, see all this uh, green stuff below us? Yep. This is called seagrass. It makes up 90% of those turtles' diet. So we are walking along the jetty. Just keep your eye out. Turtles may pop up. You come up for a bit of breath. So if you see any of this grass, you might see some turtles.